Ladies and gentlemen, what I got for you here in today's episode of Park Spotlight is a 15 roller coaster mega park, and this park is absolutely out. Outrageous. While the Steam Beige description does say that these coasters are realistic with a moderate theming <laughs> from a first hand glance, they might be absolutely ridiculous coasters. But if that's what you like to see, then you're in for a treat in today's episode. So do join me on today's park tour. Hey, oh my Planet Coaster friends, Johnny Five Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Park Spotlight. We're gonna be looking at Gemini Adventure Park, realistic coasters with moderate theming created by CP Muffin, a unknown ranked member in this community. I'm assuming a beginner builder, also a golden patron. Thank you so much for your support. And here they say, welcome to Gemini Adventure Park, where there's always something new to discover. This is my first complete park that I have made. That does explain their rank. I want you to incorporate many themed areas and feature a skywalk that lets you look over the entire park experience, some flyby elements from nearby coasters. Also wanted to focus on quality, realistic coaster layouts. All coasters have original layouts, most custom elements, and moderate theming that create a one-of-a-kind experience. It would mean the world to me if the viewers pick out their favorite ride. I hope everyone enjoys it. Well, I guess I am a viewer here today, so I guess I have to pick my favorite ride. I do like having a little fun mini game for us to play in the comments down below. So of these, uh, I counted 15. I'm not sure if there's actually 15. I might have miscounted, but there's definitely over a dozen mega coasters. So um, lots to look at in today's episode um, and lots to pick from. So of these 15 somewhat coasters, I'd love to know what your favorite is. So let's get right on into it okay welcome welcome ladies and gentlemen check this out another park gate with a coaster going right over the entrance this seems to be a running three with some of the mega parks that i have been featuring as of recently which uh, i'm a fan i'm a big big fan nice little uh, entrance gate here like the overgrown ivy looking very fun very fantasy is um I decided to let 1,500 guests into this park, even though it's a massive, sprawling mega park. I did feel like the frame rate was decent enough for us to at least have some guests rolling around the park, just to create a, a little bit more of an immersive experience, you know, a little bit more of that liveliness and that ambience of people walking around. So they're all pouring in right now. I uh, let them pour in for quite some time, and they're still pouring in. So I guess 1,500 is quite a lot to start um, spreading out and roaming around the park. So that means I did also open up the rides to the public. All rides have been opened for this episode. I'm also changing my camera speed from negative 10 to negative six. So I think we can walk around the park at this speed. We have a lot of distance to cover, a lot of coasters to go to. And this is gonna be one of those episodes where you just go from coaster to coaster to coaster um, and take a look at some of that theming in between. Now this is a beginner builder, so you know, some some feedback. If you guys want to throw some feedback, I'm sure they'll appreciate it. But let's also be a little mindful um, as this is their first build ever. As we can see, well, we do have theming pretty much everywhere. We're lacking a little bit of that shrubbery and paintery work around some of the edges. It's looking really nice over here. So there's certain aspects of the park that are going to lack polish and then other areas that are a little bit cleaner. So, you know, some of the newer builders forget to theme the outsides of their pathing, put fences in, that sort of thing. Um, but the, this creator's focus that they said here was that they really loved building coasters. We have a dinosaur eating gingerbread families. <laughs> that is fantastic. What is his name? Carlos? I don't, I, I don't know what that font says. Uh, I'm assuming there's a roller coaster in here. I don't, I don't, I don't know. This is a little bit zany, a little bit crazy, uh, but it's going to be a fun one. I'm always down for a, 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 wow. You are really making the walk a maze over here, playing the snake over there. Um, that's probably the exit. I'm going up the entrance now because they're all in queue. So I let 1,500 guests into the park and all 1,500 guests have chosen to walk this queue. <laughs> oh dear. 
So here we go. What is this coaster? What are we in for here? It's the Gargos. I said Carlos. I like Carlos better, to be honest. It's a Giga coaster. Let's take a look at the stats here. We are looking at 270 seconds in duration, two kilometers in length, with eight airtime counts and a total of seven seconds of airtime. The G forces are not exceeding the limits on this, although some of the elements seem to be pretty extreme. I mean, the biggest drop is going to be 72 meters, as you can see it going down there and look at the size of this boarding station that is ridiculous <laughs> let's check it out Look at that, we are almost going as high as the freaking observatory. Oh my good googly moogly, that is hilarious. I love it. Holy good googly moogly, Carlos, you won me over. <laughs> Let's hope nothing happens to this uh, break section because I think the maintenance team is gonna have a hard time getting up here to uh, fix these breaks. Holy good googly moogly. That was epically long. I, I, it felt like it was never going to end. Carlos took us on a journey there. My goodness gracious. Uh, wow. Uh, I wanted to point out the fact that I saw a lot of these lights scattered about while we were riding this coaster. Let's take a peek at the nighttime lighting here. Carlos, I mean, it's pretty subtle, all things considered. There's gigantic lights. I would have expected just beams of red going into the sky here, but uh, it's actually somewhat subtle. Very cool no instructions or uh mentions on the steam workshop of what perspectives to ride these coasters or if they prefer day or night for specific coasters so we're just gonna have to uh, toggle between things and figure it out for ourselves so what do we have here we have the space warp coaster it looks like a spinning coaster good googly moogly more of these gigantic spotlights <laughs> i love the fact that you uh just place them on the ground like that didn't decide to sink them or hide them or just you know make them a little subtle it's just like big giant lights everywhere I kind of love it. It's hilarious. The whole queue is one giant priority queue, by the way. That's kind of fantastic. Oh, everybody gets priority. Love to see it. So 37 miles per hour on this spinning coaster. There's a look at all the stats if you'd like to see them and let's get right onto it. No people in line for this. The excitement raiders are just bottomed out. Absolutely no G-forces on this coaster whatsoever. It is completely depressing. <laughs> let's see.
Wowee, okay, while the spin, uh, while the coaster was pretty gentle, the spins were pretty gnarly. And I like the lighting, and I also have to commend to CP Muffin for adding some music to their coasters. In fact, this whole park so far seems to have a whole lot of ambience. How do I get out of here? Oh, here we go. Look at that, we got a, a flat ride ring going around the walkway, the skyway as they called it. Wait, is the exit? I'm going, I thought this was, okay. I was like, I'm going down a priority pass. We got the space restrooms over here. Uh, I like the glow on this teal coaster over here. It's looking pretty cool. Sci-fi shopping district. Actually, uh, I think these are the default ones that come with Planet Coaster. I definitely recognize those. I was uh, looking at them and using them as inspiration on how to use the sci-fi pieces when I first started building a Planet Coaster. And uh, sci-fi was the uh, first thing that I tackled. So this is a one gigantic pathway. Whoa! And uh, it was intentionally put in the sky the way it is to be uh, serve as a skyway that you can view the whole park from. And boy, oh boy, there are a lot of nighttime lighting and crazy colors going on here uh, that I'm not really going to stray away from the nighttime lighting just yet. Oh, this queue is for the uh, ring flat ride. I'm, I'm good on skipping on that. The one downside to having this giant skyway like this is now you got to run your queues to about them all. But look at that. You have a, a drop tower that's already in the sky, which is going to give you some extra height. We could take a look at this. And maybe go to the other side here. Different row. Look at that. Look at all of those coaster tracks in the skyline there. Good googly moogly. All of these coasters are going like a hundred meters in the uh, in the sky. These are skyscraper coasters. All gigas and stratas. Gotta love it. <laughs> it's amazing. And speaking of stratas, this is the sign looks to say strata. All right. Do, 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 do. Strata. Wait, did you call the dark ride strata? Or the flat ride? Wh where are we going? What is this? Um, we go all the way up just to go all the way back down. <laughs> and again, you've made the queue one giant priority queue. I don't think the creator knows the difference between the priority queues and the regular queues, but I kind of think that's adorable. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna end up going all the way back up again. Go down to go up to go down. Uh, planet Dubstep, here we go. 1600 meters in length, 80 miles per hour, 60 meter drop. Number of versions five, eight airtime counts. Good googly moogly. Let's see what this uh, has to offer here. Uh, I think we're gonna do track view for this guy. Holy moly. Good googly moogly, this is a very deceiving park because some of these coasters and creations looked absolutely nutty from the bird's eye view, and so far, they're not really exceeding the G-forces or breaking my neck. <laughs> so I'm actually thoroughly uh, pleasantly surprised, and they've been quite, some extreme, but 
fun experiences. And that's what the uh, Planet Coaster is all about, is having a good time, making some fun designs. And this creator looks to be like they had a ton of fun creating some of these coasters and areas in this park and i love to see it the new builders coming out hot with the uh, 15 coasters now the downside to that when you do giant sprawling two mile long coasters and like 15 of them uh it becomes insanely difficult to detail and theme your areas uh before tanking the frame rate or just running out of steam and that's definitely the case here as you can see we are missing tons of theming in certain areas we have a lot of very plain and generic queues and walkways in between because it becomes almost impossible to fill all those areas and at this point i wouldn't re recommend filling all of those areas because at this point the game would absolutely melt my computer <laughs> so in some ways it's kind of like I appreciate the lack of theming, but then there seems to be just enough. You know, this definitely feels to me like a Western area. It has some of that Western aesthetics. There's just enough there but um, some areas are just a little bit bare. And I'm actually okay with that because I have more than 10 frames per second. <laughs> I actually have a decent frame rate, actually. Uh, I think we're gonna do this one at daytime. We gotta switch it back up, bring the vibrance of the park back. 630 meters in duration, the shortest coaster so far, other than the spinning one, I think, but still pretty long duration on this one. Let's uh, check it out because it's leaving. Okay, some pretty good uses of the swing there. Definitely um, a lot shorter and a lot less extreme than some of the creations we've seen so far. And a lot more theming going on in this area. Definitely appreciate that. It's looking very Western, good vibes. Okay, where to next? I see this massive strata in the background, this giant green monster that looks to appear like it stretches all the way to that side of the park and then all the way to that side of the park. So this is a good opportunity to go take a tour around the entire park. And this is a, a quite a cozy little um, Western area. Although I will have to say, this is completely the wrong path choice. <laughs> you know, I think, I think choosing some wooden or some gravel, some cobblestone even, pretty much anything other than the black that you've chosen there. Probably the gravel seems to fit best. Having that shiny tarmac or whatever it is called. What is that even called? Vinyl glossy. Um, but other than that, like this is pretty cozy. Pretty good themed little western area for sure. Good job on that. My goodness. Look at the lift on that coaster. I don't know what we're going on here. There's no signage. We're just going to walk down the queue and see which one it leads us to. It's either the Woody or this um, giant giga coaster here. What's it going to be? Whoa. A uh, dueling Woody. I'm here for it. The Silver Miner and the Gold Rusher. Okay, so the uh, I guess we're going to have to ride them both. They're both going at about 50 miles per hour. The uh, Both have about a 25 meter drop. Uh, they both seem kind of tame in terms of G-forces. Um, and they're about a minute long each. Cool. All right, well, why don't we start things off with the Silver Miner and then we'll head over to the uh, Gold Rush. Thank <laughs> you. 
I like it. I, it's been a long time since I've been on a, a dueling wooden coaster. I mean, gosh, I can't even remember the last time. I know we had one crazy epic wooden dueling coaster spotlight back in the first 100 episodes. And I think at one point somebody made a quad dueling wooden coaster. Those are very, very early on though, but some, something you definitely don't see every day. So I like the, uh, the innovation there. The psych coaster. Okay, yeah, it's definitely looking pretty psycho. Let's go. What? We're jumping up over top. Look at this boarding station with the giant lights again. I love it. Oh my goodness gracious. 1.7 kilometers, 77 miles per hour, 60 meter drop, eight airtime counts, seven seconds of airtime. Good googly moogly. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. The Psycho Coaster. Oh my goodness. I do feel like the transitions could have used a lot more smoothing. It felt like we're going straight down and then straight forward and then straight up. <laughs> Holy crap. A little bit jarring, a little bit on the extreme side, but hey. I'm having a good time. <laughs> Holy moly. And all the way back out. I like how you just lead us to the end of the park and back in through a queue and an exit. Holy moly, you're going to get your leg workout on you going through this park, that's for sure. Holy moly. The sad little uh, flat rides, the zero theming plop down. Feels like someone was playing in scenario mode, just placing things down. Uh, <laughs> the game totally incentivizes you to do that too. And then it's like, oh my god, I have to theme all this. Oh my goodness, how do I do this? Um, there's this gigantic RMC here, and I want to go on it, but I don't know how to. <laughs> well, we'll figure it out later. I might have to ride some of these from a uh, bird's eye view if I'm not led to the stations. <laughs> what happened to this building here? My gosh, what is this? <laughs> the Enigma. All right. I like how you named your building. What? What's this? The Lost Coaster. Almost got lost myself. All right. Hey, we got some a uh, little bit of a nature walk going through this queue here. This is looking pretty thematic, very cozy, inclusive. All right, we're hopping though. Again, still using the priority queues. <laughs> Okay, another wooden coaster, but this one being like two kilometers long, 77 miles per hour with a 60 meter drop, 10 airtime counts and nine seconds of airtime. Wow, holy moly.
Wow. So first we had dueling wooden coasters, which I haven't seen in a very long time. And then we have an exploration wooden coaster that takes you around the entire park. And holy moly, it really goes to show how big this park is. As you guys saw when I was looking off the lift there, you could see all the way to the ends of the park. And this appeared to go even further back to an area which I did not even think existed in this park, uh, making it sprawl even further. Now, we'll have to say just an FYI for anyone building parks and for the creator of this park, um, there's one thing that the wooden coaster doesn't do well, and that is optimization. The higher the coaster goes up, the more of these wooden supports it has to make. And as you can see here, each one of these is like a bunch of little polygons and it just adds more and more and more and more and more <laughs> and I've uh, I actually was speaking earlier about somebody once made a quadruple dueling coaster and it was so big uh, that coaster alone in an in a dead empty park with nothing else in the park lagged out my computer <laughs> because there's so many supports so one of the um, culprits to frame rate and one of the uh, things that the game struggles most with is the uh, in fact the wooden coaster so I guess my uh, word of advice there is to if you're gonna do an exploration try to pick a, a coaster that's not a wooden coaster that is an exit yeah because a two mile wooden coaster is already gonna hit your computer pretty hard there oh so this is the Enigma coaster we saw the Enigma building back there <laughs> Okay, so they're tied together somehow. Wow, -ee. Uh, this is definitely looking like an enigma. Something out of, uh, gosh, it's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't think of it. Um, anyways, <laughs> I think it's supposed to resemble, um, like a, a Chinese theme, but you made it out of basic shapes. <laughs> Maybe this person hasn't downloaded the World's Fair DLC yet. <laughs> It's looking like something out of a dream. Oh my god, that is crazy. And it is an inverted coaster here, ladies and gentlemen. What are the stats on this bad boy? Uh, uh 1.3 kilometers, seven, seven inversions. Let's check it out. Yeah, all of these coasters so far have been uh, ridiculously long. I like it. <laughs> Lots of content. Let's go. Ah, it came to me, off the tip of my tongue. It looks like something out of the movie Inception. <laughs> That is really quite crazy. I think that was supposed to be intended for nighttime, but that's quite all right. And now we take the path that brings us all the way back to the Enigma building over there. Holy good googly moogly. <laughs> Look at this one little lonely building over here. Oh, I love it. <laughs> this looks like something out of a McDonald's play, uh, play area. <laughs> Oh my goodness, what is happening here? Is this another coaster queue? We don't have a lot. Some of the coasters have signs and then others have been completely forgotten about. Oh, it's a train station. <laughs> so apparently there's a train station going around the whole park as well, but I don't, oh, now I can open it. I think it had a test and I, <laughs> well, I did the whole introduction and got the B-roll. Um, it still wasn't 
finished to a point where I could actually put it into a uh, play mode. <laughs> that's, that's a really long train ride. Okay, we have bloodlust. So maybe uh, most of the coasters do have signs because the just, just the train station didn't? I don't know. I haven't really quite been paying attention. Where the heck does this go? Through the smog. I really hate how long these queues are <laughs> with nothing to look at. It's really drab. Okay, what is all of this? Oh my God, it's a winged launch coaster. Bloodlust, it's the winged launch cloud runner coaster. There's a look at the stats, another one kilometer long coaster with seven inversions on this bad boy. Holy good googly moogly. We're going in uh, wing view, cause why not? what to say about that. Was this supposed to be like a dark ride? Was I supposed to ride this at night? Um, I didn't see a whole bunch of lights everywhere like we did with the previous coasters. Yeah, it's just kind of off on its own in the forest with really spooky music and lots of inversions and flips. Oh, uh, wow. Okay, it didn't really feel like a spooky area, but I guess this is the uh, the haunted area of the park. Oh my God, look at this pink or uh, purple and yellow. That's a vibe. Oh my goodness, I am so turned up. <laughs> There's a pirate area right here. I don't even know how to get to half of these coasters. I'm sure if, like, this is the Skyway Walk, isn't it? Is this the same Skyway Walk that we went on earlier? I have no idea. I am so mixed up. But if we're going to pirate, we should go back to daytime here. Uh, <laughs> the queues are so long that you don't even know where they, they begin and end. <laughs> like, the queue for this coaster could be, like, over there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, there's the whirly rig. Is that a third wooden coaster? I guess a fourth because our, we had two dueling, which, which counts as two. Then we had an exploration woody over there and then another one over here. Holy moly, four wooden coasters. Well, I do like a good woody. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. So we have a, a stand up gigantic corkscrew. Wow. Um, where do we enter? That is the question. I don't feel like the hammer swing fits the pirate area, but I'll take it. And there it is. We do have a sign for this guy. The pirate's revenge. Oh no, I got hiccups. That's never great. And here we are at the shanty boarding station. I really like this boarding station. It's quite cozy. Okay, how many mo kilometers is this one? 1.24. <laughs> 62 miles an hour, 36 meter drop. All right. Pirate's Revenge. Strap up. Let's uh, give it a go. Did I say stand up? I think it's floorless. I'm not entirely sure. L let me look. It's a floorless. They look kind of similar from a distance.
Damn, I was really enjoying that coaster until we hit that block section and just stopped. And I, I, even on fast forward, we had to wait a few seconds there on triple speed. I've noticed that with a few of your coasters, if not like three or four by now, uh, they get to a block section and just stop or just slow down and lose all of their momentum entirely. And I'm not I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of that, especially considering, uh, you know, a lot of them are like 1.5 kilometers and then we just cut all that speed. So I don't know. Feels a little bit off to me. But I like the colors, the vibrance, and the layout of that coaster, the surrounding area, all the little islands and water and things like that. So we have another massive queue here for what appears to be uh, the train ride. I, I was like, I don't see a sign over there. Maybe it's the train ride. Definitely is. It looks to me like there's two coasters back there. Oh, I think this... This one back here that I can't really click. Where does that begin? Oh my goodness. How d <laughs> I walk right by this or what? I guess I did. To me, I thought, I guess we passed by this and I thought it was a shop. The juggernaut. All, all the buildings in this area seem to have this like McDonald's theme. <laughs> I didn't think this was a station at all. I mean, it's certainly just a platform. So what do we have here? The Juggernaut Proto Wing Tiamat Green across the board, 78 miles per hour, 1.6 kilometers, 11 airtime counts and 10 seconds of airtime. Good googly moogly. This is going to be a, a doozy. Buckle up. Right, definitely no stopping on that one. I'm a fan. Holy moly, did that stretch out really far and at a very high speed too. Um, I mean, at, at, considering we uh, had 1.6 kilometers of track, that actually p bypassed pretty fast because we were averaging, wow, like 30, 40 miles per hour throughout that entire experience. <laughs> Holy crap. Okay, that was that dark ride coaster. Let's see if we could find some of these other ones like this Woody here. I I'm assuming this is like a second sky platform. I'm not entirely sure, but let's, uh, holy crapola. Um, there it goes. Holy crap, we got like a little bit of a cobra roll going right over the pathway. I kind of like that. <laughs> see if we can catch it coming by here. There it goes. Hello. Seems kind of dangerous. <laughs> Wow, that coaster's going right over top of the tip of the castle there. Is this a Looney Turns? This is supposed to be a family-friendly coaster that goes uh, as high as a castle and then literally goes upside down and straight down. Uh, I'm not riding that. <laughs> well, at least not in real life. <laughs> Holy no. No. <laughs> ah! Good luck! <laughs> My goodness. And here we got a wild RMC. I mean, the sky view, as weird as it is, and as dangerous as it is, um, it's kind of epic. <laughs> I kind of like the craziness of all this. Oh, wow. Certainly do. So the Skywalk, this Skywalk didn't have any crazy cues connected to it like the other one did. So we're actually going to have to head back to foot level and see if we could find our way to some of these coasters. I, at this point, I don't even know if the, using the ride list is going to help me. Um, I can't remember all the names of the coasters and which ones we've been on because some of these coasters are so like they're, they're intertwining with other coasters and it confuses the heck out of me. <laughs> oh, we're back at Carlos. All right. Oh, I love this park. <laughs> this is so crazy. Oh, 
I, I, I feel a little bit normal again coming through this main main area. Ah, you can calm down for a little bit, and then ah! <laughs> that happens. Um, that's that's a, another mega queue for a Ferris wheel. Where's all the coaster queues? I just don't understand this. Um, there's some random flat rides. I could have sworn I've walked around every inch of this park. Am I losing my mind? What 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 is this? Hex? Oh no, it's that thing. Oh no. This is not a family-friendly ride. All these children, get them out of here. We're all gonna die. Oh gosh, what is this? <sighs> Five vertical G-forces, six, 60 miles per hour, uh, a kilometer in length, a 40 meter drop at the top of that castle there. Five inversions. My goodness. I already don't like these coasters that much, and I feel like we're not going to come off this one alive. Oh, they're supposed to be tame. <laughs> Let's check it out. He, he looked forward. And he's like, how high are we going? That is gnarly and I kind of love it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think this was another one I was supposed to ride at night. Uh, word to the creator, just, and all creators, the people who send their submissions in, what I recommend doing is listing off your rides on the Steam page, letting us know your thoughts behind the ride, your per your preferences, preference seat view, track view, ride it at night or day. Uh, that was definitely supposed to be a nighttime experience, but I really don't have any way of uh, knowing. Yeah, I like having a little description. Burm, 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 burm. All right, I am so mixed up. I, I feel like there's going to be a queue over here, right? I, I could have sworn I already came through the western area. Oh, here it is. It's the Great Horn. Okay, we'll do the Woody at day, even though there's a ton of orange lighting, which I kind of like. Holy moly. See, this is what I was talking about with the, earlier about all the wooden supports. The game doesn't love this at all. Considering you have four wooden coasters and gigantic ones and an RMC, uh, this might actually be the RMC. I'm not sure at this point. The frame rate's holding up. Frame rate is holding up. I'm actually kind of impressed. Okay. Is it? It is a steel RMC. 65 miles an hour, eight airtime counts, five seconds of airtime, three inversions on this bad boy, 60, oh, and uh, one kilometer in length. Let's check it out. Is this the end? 
Okay, it looks like it's the end. I think we can cut it off there. Holy good googly moogly. Ladies and gentlemen, I am zooming out for the rest of this experience because I have no idea what the heck we've been on, what we haven't. I did we go on this guy here? Uh, Malsimus. Malsimus. Yeah, we're gonna have to find our way to the coasters from the bird's eye view. Either I walked by the entrances and didn't even notice. There's so many things going on. It is visual, uh, clutter. My goodness, another inverting coaster. Here we go, almost a kilometer in length. 26 meters is the biggest drop, 55 miles per hour, five inversions. Let's go. Googly moogly. Oh, I kind of love that layout. That is uh, quite the knot. Really cool. I was just thinking, you know, if some of them are just under a kilometer, some of them are two kilometers. If we averaged it out, there's probably a kilometer per coaster with a 15 or 16 coasters in this park. We're looking at like 16 kilometers of coaster track in this park. That is just insanity. Absolute insanity. Where even is the queue for this coaster? What is happening here? I don't understand this. Oh, wait, we go down through here. Did I go on this? The strata mission. I think I did, didn't I? Now I can't even remember. Oh, maybe I remember walking by this. Yeah, and then I went down. I went in there. Maybe maybe it's because I uh, rode it at night and now I'm not recognizing it. Yeah, I think I rode this one at night. Well, I, I hope that's the case. <laughs> I really do. It'd be, it'd be a shame to miss a coaster that I'm literally looking at. <laughs> but my memory, I, I it's just becoming foggy at this point. And then this was Carlos. This is what I'm saying. It's so hard to tell what I've been on, what I haven't, because I feel like there's coaster coasters passing by other coasters. Oh, so this is the one that went over the giant uh, castle there. This wasn't a Woody. It ended up being an RMC, but there's that's the dueling Woodies. Okay, that's the, the terrifying family coaster. <laughs> is this the pirate one? That, no, that, that's... Okay, we went on that. Wait, there is a giant Woody. I came through here and I went left. I don't know what I did, but here we go. Another coaster. Uh, how long is this one? Almost a kilometer. Yep. Uh, 56 miles per hour. 31 meters is the biggest drop. 11 airtime counts. Six seconds of total airtime. And it's the, called the cannonade. This one's just chilling. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll do seat view. a lot of bunny hills. That is where all the airtime counts are coming from. That is absolutely amazing. How do you even pick a favorite amongst all of the crazy? Ladies and gentlemen, there it is. That is the giant mega park. Did we actually go on everything? If I miss something, then uh, that is my bad. But I just want to take a look around, make sure I didn't. And I think we hit it all, to be honest. Either way, that's uh, that was a lot of coaster content. It was just one after another after another. Um, 
Is this both Carlos? Yes, it's both Carlos. My favorite's gonna be Carlos, okay? That's the one I'm picking. It goes over the gate, it goes over the castle, it goes up to uh, insane heights. Um, from the perspective of the coaster, it looked like we were almost reaching the top of the observatory, but I guess that's not the case at all. About halfway up, perspective-wise, it looked that way. And um, yeah, it, it wasn't called Cargos, it was Gargos, but <laughs> I kind of like it. So that's gonna be my pick. Uh, what is your favorite coaster and why? Uh, um, a message to the creator. I, I don't even know what to say because this was so insanely wild and actually had a really good time. Uh, we had the sky pathway, which hasn't been done before because it's so unrealistic and insane, but uh, it offered some really cool viewpoints, especially the second walkway with like the cobra roll there and uh, the crazy wild most thing going over it. Um, there's so much just wild zany. I mean, the path work is absolutely atrocious, <laughs> but again, it has this like quirkiness to it this it's kind of adorable right and uh you, you definitely tried with the theming there were some pretty immersive pirate areas there were some pretty immersive fantasy areas your main uh, main street was kind of uh really nice and polished uh very immersive you had some sci-fi areas i mean a little bit of western too uh so the areas are feeling somewhat distinct uh i guess <laughs> don't know what to say it's so big and so sprawling like i said if you would have actually like really leveled up the theming, really leveled up the path work, really leveled up the details. This park would not run at all. So how do you create an experience this zany, this wild with like literally 16 kilometers worth of coaster track without actually murdering people's computers? This is how you do it. <laughs> so it's like, I can't really take anything away from it. I can't say add to it because then that would actually be bad advice and then we wouldn't even be able to experience it. So I think you just got to take it for what it is. <laughs> Right? You just got to take it for what it is. And it was, it was quite an experience. I'll give you that. I had fun and that's all that matters. And it looks to me like uh, the, the creator had a ton of fun making these mile long coasters everywhere. They were enjoyable, just crazy, wild. Uh, there's just, there's so much there. Uh, like I said, you just got to accept it for what it is and <laughs> it gets my stamp of approval. That was fun. I think that's all that matters at the end of the day. I guess if I were to actually try to provide some proper feedback to CP Muffin being a new builder or whatever, just try to narrow scope because you definitely, you know, you wanted to build so much. You had so many ambitions and you had things that you wanted to try. You went in there and you had fun. You just, you know, did what the game does best and, and just got creative and messed around and, and, um, just play it around. So I would just say in the future, try to tighten things up, uh, make a smaller park, tighter, tighter areas, you know, cut your coaster count in half or in a third, try to do like five to six really, really polished coasters in terms of the whole package, custom supports, theming, um, surrounding area, you know, really detailed. And then, you know, you don't have to theme the whole coaster. You can have it run in the back, uh, the back of the park like this. And, and then you can get away with less theming over there, but you can front load the theming and yeah, that sort of thing. Just try to tighten, <clears throat> tighten things up and make a smaller park so you have less to decorate. And then you could just try to clean up your path work a little bit, try to theme your cues a little bit. And then, um, you know, and one thing you actually did really well that I'm impressed by is the lighting. You did so much lighting. And if you go for slightly smaller coasters, uh, they'll be less uh, strenuous to light and less strenuous to theme. And I think you'll find, you know, you can focus a little more just polishing theming, polishing cues and path work and that sort of thing. But at the same time, I think what you did here was just a lot of fun. So, you know, I'd like to see if you, what, what things would look like if you just tightened it up a little bit, you know, to my previous point, if you would have fully themed everything in this park, probably wouldn't have ran anyways, and we wouldn't have had a great experience. So I kind of like say it again, like a broken record. Uh, I have to accept it for what it is. And it was a, a fun, crazy, awesome mega park with 16 miles of coaster. I can't complain. That was awesome. What did you guys think? What was your favorite coaster the creator really wants to know what your favorite coaster was so fire away down in the comments below if you're wondering what the coasters were and what they were named there should
should be like a playlist on the side uh, for chapter timestamps or if you mouse over the uh, time bar for the video we will have timestamps for each of the coasters and their names and if you just mouse over them or I guess put your finger over them on your phone or whatever uh, it should give you like a picture of what the coaster was and its name and then you can leave your comment down below so there it is a fun crazy wild mega park for you guys here today always love to experience stuff like this different than what we normally see and um really good job cp muffin keep up the, f the amazing work and uh thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode of park spotlight bye now